Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Um, in this video today, I'm going to discuss uh, the foundations of genocide. And um, this is going to be the first of um, multi-series video lectures that I'll be presenting on genocide. Uh, by profession, I am uh, a genocide theorist, a genocide scholar, um, and I want to make the idea of genocide accessible to the general public. The information that I'm going to be presenting in the, the, the next series of videos is going to be very um, introductory, very general. I'm not going to get into too much detail, um, though as a collective, the, the series of videos should cover uh, a substantial breadth of uh, introductory understanding to the concept of genocide. So with that being said, uh, let's begin our discussion on the foundations of genocide. Well, um, to begin the discussion, the idea of genocide, um, though it is a contemporary um, idea, a 20th century idea, um, in no sense negates the fact that genocide only occurred since the 20th century. Genocide has been going on um, basically since the beginning of time. Um, and there's a phenomenal account of sort of the historical progression of genocide by a scholar um, ben Kiernan, uh, in a book called Blood and Soil, where he tracks um, sort of the progression, the historical progression. He's not the only scholar to do this. There's many scholars that have done this. Um, the historical progression of genocide basically throughout time. So the first misconception is that genocide is a contemporary sort of 20th, 21st century phenomenon. That's, that's categorically false. Genocide um, had occurred prior to the 20th century. It has been well documented. The only thing that didn't exist was the label of genocide. The next point of clarification that I'd like to make um, before I actually begin the lecture um, is a personal pet peeve that I have as a social scientist. Um, if I were a hard scientist, if I were a physicist or a chemist um, or a biologist, um, no one says that a physicist, a chemist, or a biologist goes out into the world and invents um, theories or invents ideas or invents concepts, right? When um, Sir Isaac Newton sat under the apple tree, and this might be all, you know, sort of allegory, but when Sir Isaac Newton sat under the apple tree and the apple falls down from the tree and he observes the apple falling, no one says that Sir Isaac Newton invented the laws of gravity, right? They say that Sir Isaac Newton discovered the laws of gravity. Similarly, um, I've seen uh, on many sites and I've heard many accounts where, where someone will say that um, the discoverer of the concept genocide, Raphael Lemkin, which I'll put his information up in a second, um, that uh, Raphael Lemkin uh, invented the concept of genocide. He did not in any sense invent this, this idea of genocide, right? As I just described, the, the idea of genocide occurred prior to uh, 1944, right, uh, for hundreds of years uh, prior to 1944, thousands of years prior to 1944. What Raphael Lemkin did was that he discovered the, the idea, he discovered the, the concept of genocide and simply gave it a name. Um, so that's just my own personal disclaimer. People are under the, um, the oppression that Social scientists invent things, right? And social science scientists, when they're doing their research well, um, discover truths. And I wouldn't say that genocide was an invention of uh, Raphael Lemkin as much as it was a discovery by Raphael Lemkin. Personal caveat, just had to get that out there. Nevertheless, let's begin uh, discussion. So, Raphael Lemkin... Raphael Lemkin uh, coined the term genocide uh, in 1944, and he was uh, a, a Polish jurist, right? He was a jurist of uh, Jewish descent, so he was heavily steeped in the legal tradition. Um, and what he wanted to do was he wanted to offer an account, he wanted to be able to describe sort of the brutality that was existing. Um, specifically with respect to sort of describing the atrocities that happened during um, the Armenian Genocide. So Raphael Lincoln comes up 
uh, with a word, right, for this concept that had existed for millennia, this concept of total destruction, for lack of a better phrase, uh, sort of just general speaking now. Um, and he, he came up with the idea of genocide, right? Uh, the, the word genocide, and I stand corrected, he, he coined the, the phrase genocide, the idea of genocide had already existed, right? Um, so the term genocide is comprised of two, uh, two, point, two segments, right? So the etymology of it, first is geno, G-E-N-O, and the next is side, C-I-D-E. Well, um, geno is Greek, this is Greek, and side is Latin, right? So it's a combination of Greek and Latin, right? Geno basically means family, or tribe, or kind, I guess. Um, some people use the word race uh, to describe Gino. I don't use the word race to describe Gino. Uh, one, because I don't believe in race. Two, because the idea of race is um, sort of a, a um, scientific enlightenment. It's the product of sort of enlightenment um, philosophies. Uh, and it would be anachronistic, I argue, to attribute race to ancient Greeks. They didn't properly have sort of the concept of race. And to evoke the term race in a contemporary sense on ancient Greeks would just muddy the waters, so I don't use race to describe Gino. But you get the idea. A tribe, a kind, a group, a collective. People have sort of similar characteristics and so on. You get the idea. Okay, so Gino. Side obviously means uh, to kill. So it's, uh, you know, the act of killing members of a tribe, right? That's a, a good way of thinking about genocide. So roughly sort of the act of killing members of a tribe. I'm in a very brief moment going to give you a very technical uh, definition of genocide. But what's important to understand, especially in this introductory account, is that the definitions of genocide um, are still being debated, right? Um, there's a very active process uh, among genocide theorists and scholars uh, in a contemporary setting to still argue about definitional accounts of genocide. Does this definition of genocide fit this characteristic? We believe that it should and it doesn't. Why? Let's modify it. Let's amend it. Um, let's truncate it and so on. Um, the definition that I'm going to stand by, and there will be contentions among genocide theorists because not all genocide theorists are subscribed to, and there have been amendments made to the initial definition, but for a point of just introductory and just to keep everything sort of uh, very general, I'm going to refer to sort of the canonical definition, the canonical representation of the definition of genocide. Um, as described in Article 2 of the UNGC. I'll explain what all this means in a second. All right, so technically defined then, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this idea of killing of a tribe, right? And we're going to see what the technical definition of genocide is, and we're going to talk about how we make sense of this concept of genocide, especially in a contemporary setting. Okay, so it, within Article 2... Within Article 2 of the 1948, and it's a sort of a technical long title, but it's the Convention on the, uh, the quotes, the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide which I'm going to abbreviate as UNGC for United Nations Genocide Convention. Um, so instead of saying the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide, I'll just simply say the UNGC interchangeably. I, I'm using that um, interchangeably. Right? So Article 2 of the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of uh, Genocide um, describes this idea of, of genocide, right? What is it that we mean by this crime of genocide, right? What, when we're talking about the crime of genocide, what is it that we mean by this crime, this particular act of genocide? Um, how do we identify this crime of genocide, and so on? 